for this project, I actually found four of these drawer things at Dollar Tree. How exciting! I actually thought of grabbing some more but and posting them for you all, but are any of you even interested in purchasing something like that or the idea of paying shipping totally sucks the fun out of it and you'd rather just go without? I'm curious, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm using my beloved Dewalt electric screwdriver to remove the tag holder from the front. Word to the wise, please fill your holes before you start painting so you don't have to go back and touch up like I did. Womp womp. Next, I measured out a line down the center of each side of the drawers and marked them heavily with my pencil. Some of you may have done this differently, but when I removed the labels, it left a very sticky residue. I started to sand it off, but I realized that that square was going to take a lot of work to remove, and I actually thought I might like the idea of possibly giving it a more weathered look, so I'd actually decided to see what that looks like, and you can let me know at the end if you think it was a good move or a bad move. I started painting the boxes with apple barrel paint in the color Warm Buff. As usual, I will have a list of materials and links to some of them in the description box below. Then I followed around the box and I just kind of randomly painted. I did originally see a photo of something similar at a store, and this was like a year ago, so I couldn't actually find that photo again, so I'm going off of memory. You'll notice also that I'm holding the drawers together with one hand so that they look uniform when I am finished. I painted the top of the crate with only the warm buff color and the plaster color. I'm also only showing you this part so you can see the difference when I painted the base coat with the plaster color as opposed to the warm buff color. I think the plaster color gave it a little more pop and I'm really happy that that's going to be the one that stacks on top. Also I don't know why I didn't paint the bottom of either one of these boxes like I normally do. I just don't, I don't know where my head was this day. Oh well. Next, I took a chisel tipped brush with some Waverly paint in the color Elephant and I painted over the lines on each of the drawers. This was about the time that I realized I didn't fill the holes. I used some Dollar Tree spackle and filled in two of the holes on each set, and then I touched up that area with the corresponding paint. I also flipped the lower box around so that the holes wouldn't be too noticeable. I flipped the boxes over to the back and attached two small hinges to each box. I actually bought those hinges at Home Depot and I believe they were under $3, so they weren't very expensive. And after that, I just put two of those tag holders back on. Hello! Ah! Hello! <laughs> So I needed something to make this box, or both the boxes, look more like crates, because that's what I'm going for. So I grabbed a few of my jumbo popsicle sticks. I usually buy them at Walmart. I measured them out and cut them, and then I painted them with a mixture of apple barrel paint in the color Timeless Gray, mixed with Anita's acrylic craft paint in the color Earth Brown. I then sanded the pieces with a sanding block from Dollar Tree, and then I hot glued them in place.
I still didn't feel like this was quite done, so I grabbed my handy dandy tool. Once again, not sponsored, I just stink and love it. And I measured out and carefully drilled two holes in each side of my crate. Once I had all my holes drilled, I took some thick jute string that I buy from Walmart. I just added some tape to the end and fed it through the holes all at once. You obviously don't have to do it that way. I just wanted to knock it all out in one punch. And then I just cut the string and tied a basic knot at each end as close to the hole as possible. Project number two starts with two packages of these mini glass bowls from Dollar Tree. They come in a four pack and I will be using six bowls out of the pack. I picked up my E6000 glue and just glued the bowls together to form three orbs. Next I wanted these orbs to have a sea glass color to them so I just poured some white Elmer school glue from Dollar Tree into a cup and I added some blue food coloring to it. I didn't follow any recipe, I just eyeballed it, and I went by color, and you guys, this technique worked so well. It was perfect. You will see. So I just painted the dyed glue. So I just painted with the dyed glue, I let it dry, and then I went over it with a second coat, and then I went to bed and let it dry overnight. This was actually after the first coat, and I was shocked at how good it looked. I was actually nervous to do a second coat, but I did it anyway, and I'm glad I did because it was perfect. Okay, this is what it looked like the next day, and oh my goodness, how cool is this, you guys? I'm so happy that I decided to do this technique rather than just buy the sea glass paint because this was super cool. Next, I took some jute string that I had in my stash and measured out four strings, each about 30 to 35 inches. I folded it in half and tied a loop. I then took the three remaining strings and attached them to the loop using a lark's head macrame knot, which is basically folding a loop over the circle and then bringing the ends through the loop. And then after that was complete, I just tightened the main circle. I hot glued the circle to the bottom of the glass and then I took two strings from two strands and tied a knot. I did this all the way around. Now grab two strings again from two different strands and tie them together to make a fishnet look. You can space them out however you like. I chose to only do three rows. After you're finished with the knots, gather all the ends at the top and tie two knots. Now to finish it off, you take one 
or two of the strings and tie a loop about four inches up the strings. Next, to gather all the strings together and wrap one of the strands around all the strings. When it runs out, simply hot glue the end in place, grab another string and continue wrapping until you get to the loop that you made. Now be sure to cut off all the remaining strings before you finish so you can tuck them into the wrap. If this is confusing, you can also, if this is totally confusing, you can also finish it off the same way you would make a tassel. I just think it would be more dis difficult. So I may, did this really weird. It probably, most of you probably would not have done it this way. But that's the only thing that came to my mind at the moment. And I wanted all three floats to hang together. So I gathered three strands of jute string and I folded them and tied a loop. And then I just strung on each of the boat floats and then I tied them in place and frayed out the end. Okay, for this project, you will need a candle holder. This was in my stash, but I purchased it at Dollar Tree and I got some nautical rope also from Dollar Tree. Now this project was a tricky one to figure out, but I finally found someone who gave the best tutorial. If you want to make this project, I will have his tutorial linked in my description box. So he advised to start this project by using a rubber band to secure the end of the rope to the jar. What a genius. Next, wrap the rope around the jar once, crossing over that starting end, and then wrap around one more time and stop at the starting end. Now take your working end and pull it under the starting end so that now you have three strands to work with. Take that working end again and go over the middle strand and under that bottom strand. But don't tie a knot like I did. Whoops. This may seem confusing, but I promise it is only for the first few minutes while you're just trying to figure it out. Right here is where we're gonna make the foundation and then the rest is just following the pattern and it's super easy. Turn the jar slightly until you display three strands again. Take strand number one and pull it over strand number two. Then take your working end and go through the hole and under the top strand or strand number one. After this step is complete, you should be back to the starting end you may want to give yourself a little slack here with the rope so that it's not too tight while you work. The next steps are super easy. That was the groundwork. Now you're going to have the working rope follow the starting rope around the, gra the glass until you get the desired amount of strands. I used two of the nine and a half foot Dollar Tree packs of nautical rope for each candle holder and I made two. As you can see, after you lay the initial pattern, the rest is just following around the glass and it comes together pretty nicely. And then if it starts getting too tight, you just give it a little slack and loosen the rope and then continue. To connect the two strands of rope, I just 
hot glued the ends together and tucked them under the design. This is what it looks like to loosen the rope and give more slack. Also, in case you're wondering, yes, I removed the tape over the ends of the ropes that I glued together. And once it's to your liking, you simply remove that hairband and tuck in the ends, and voila! Also, because this little candle holder was so round, the design was sliding all over the place when it was finished. So I just tacked four buttons of hot glue on the bottom to secure the rope a little better. And that worked great. Okay, so this project used up some stuff that I just had that was old and needed to serve a purpose. So I had this Dollar Tree charger and a bunch of seashells, all of which came from Dollar Tree packs. These were all left over from other projects that I have done previously, so they all have dried glue on them and whatnot, and they needed to be used. So I put all the shells to the side and took the charger outside to paint. I ended up using a mirror spray paint on this one because I was kind of hoping it would look like a mirror in the center, but it, it didn't end up being that way, so oh well. It still looked really cool. Once that was dry, I just began to place the seashells around the edges just to see what it would actually look like and if it was working. I feel like my arrangement abilities are rather weak, so I didn't want to just go straight for the glue. And then once I had all the shells how I like them, I just hot glued them in place. I felt like it needed a little something more, so I decided to add some nautical rope that I had um, just around the edge. But first, it was a little worn and weathered and used, so I just burnt the edges with a lighter and it gave it a really nice look, like a darker look, just very nice. And then I just hot glued it around the edges. I finished it off by adding a few more shells around just a couple areas that seemed a little too blank, and then that was it. You guys, these projects turned out way above me, above and beyond my expectation. So I'm super proud. Gonna toot my horn a minute. If you enjoyed this, please give this a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. I hope you guys have a good day. I really appreciate every single one of you and for giving me the time of day. Bye. Bye.